Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Shells. Um, if you're new here, hello. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me through this whole YouTube journey. Today, I am joined by Wonders World again, and we are back with another social work video. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video, and make sure you're subscribed to Wonders World and smash that notification bell as well. Period. This video, yeah, is basically going to be about it's a chit chat. Isn't it? It's a chit chat about the differences of our teams that we work in. So, as you guys may or may not already know, we are both senior practitioners and we work in a mash team, which is a multi agency safeguarding hub. We are employed by two very, very different local authorities. Um, but we're going to talk about the differences of our mashes and how they differ, why they differ. Does it make sense? Like would we implement anything differently and yeah would we recommend working for our service because i think i don't think oh. we realized how different it was until we were just talking we were, i think i was working from home from shelves and she was Make talking sure about she that vlog <laughs> yeah she was, she was talking about some stuff and i was thinking huh? and she's like yeah I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no that's not meant to happen so we realized that there's actually quite a few differences in our roles even mm -hmm. though they're the same roles for local authorities so we thought we should, we should just have a chit chat about yeah. it yeah yeah how many matches have you worked in as a senior as a senior one just one okay so as a senior i've worked in two different mashes so this one and another one in london um and even within that it's very different okay yeah because i've worked as a social worker in one and it's a little bit different to what I'm in now. So it's like, everyone's doing different things. Literally, and it's crazy. Because obviously we know that every local authority is different, but then it's just like, are oh, they not the same job? So I guess fundamentally we're doing the same things or similar yeah, things. Yeah, sort of the same outcomes. Comes, but it's just the processes. processes. Yeah. And some of it is... I'm going to just talk about like, the service that i worked in before this one that i'm in quickly just very briefly and then just go through the whole process so basically in the mash team we get referrals for literally every single and anything under the sun can come to the mash team like sometimes it might not even be something for children's services but it can come to the mash team and then we literally are like a filter and we have to go through all of that information read it direct it to certain teams or services or if it is for us then go through the whole process is that correct, Jan? Yeah, pretty much like a triage. Basically, so. yeah. So when we get referrals in that are for children's services, um, what we typically do is have to screen that information, yeah? So when we're screening, we're looking at who it's come from, where it's come from, why it's come in, what the concerns are, what the risks are, and the most important thing is the threshold. Does it meet threshold for statutory intervention? Does it require any kind of community support? So early intervention, early help, or can we just NFA this because we don't need to be involved? Like it doesn't need to be in, in our system. We don't need to like have any involvement. Yeah, cool. So where I've worked before, bruh, in the mash, can I just say there are time scales, right? Very 24 <laughs> hours. It's it's supposed to be supposedly 24 hours right and then you also have a rag rating which is the red amber green rating which determines the level of urgency that you need to request information from your partner agencies and that they need to actually respond to you by pause go ahead do you request okay we say mass checks but yeah. yes rag ratings um but do you request information from partner partner, partner agencies but every case where i am now that's crazy no are you asking where i am now okay let's speak about now our jobs now jobs now yeah every case that gets allocated out to a mash social worker has to, you you are requesting mash x effectively how intrusive is that very intrusive is it proportionate absolutely not okay so mine's very different because we only request we say mass inquiry, mass checks. We only request information from partner agencies when it's necessary. For example, if Anonymous calls and says this mum's taking drugs and the mum's like, no, I'm not, we then do mass checks to see if there's any sort of safeguarding concerns that would come to light from any 
other professional is there a problem is there a drug and alcohol problem that's never come to our attention that other par partner agencies are aware of mm -hmm. and then that's what we work off and if there isn't then the concern is actually not substantiated then we close it but then if we're dealing with let's say like a police report or suffering from school or a disclosure or anything we ain't doing no checks mm. but she's saying that every single case so that's allocated we would be doing mass checks that is that. exhausting that is called overworking workers overworking workers intrusive and unnecessarily doing checks that come in right so let's just talk about our ro roles in the team first because obviously our roles differ okay so yeah. let's start with our roles because it's yeah. actually very different very different so in the service that i work for now obviously yes i am a senior practitioner but what i do is a lot of the like so i go through the inbox so in every mash team you have like the emails where all the referrals come in so there's like literally four pods so you have emails phones the duty line reds and then you'd also have incoming where all the referrals get processed to once they've been put into the system and then you literally rotate um so if i'm in emails i'm responding to every single living email that comes into the local authority or closing it down or telling admin to just i'm basically doing what manager would be doing so you literally pick up the case like review it this is not for us, or it needs to go to this team, or I need to send things to legal, or I need to say to that manager, you need to review this, it's coming back to your team. So those are the sorts of things when I'm doing in the inbox. Inbox can be bloody busy when I'm on that week. I can't record, I can't do nothing. Like, I can't Ooh. talk to no one. Shell said that that's what she feels managers should be doing. The inbox in my local authority is run by admin workers. Oh. Not managers, not seniors, not social workers. The admin workers, they are monitoring the inbox and saying, okay, this is not for us, this is for, for us, this needs to be added as a contact, this doesn't. Yeah. How mad? How mad? And where I worked before previously, you would have admin working very closely with the manager because any case that would come in, like let's say it was a level four, um, which is a red, let's say it was a red mash, um, the manager will see it straight away in the inbox and the manager will say, Sorry, okay, this is... Wait, a red means, like, it's urgent. it's urgent. It could actually escalate to an Six assessment seven, team, such yeah, as seven. Yeah. Or more likely than not. Yeah. And the manager sees it there and then they'll allocate it straight out to a senior. So whereas we didn't even say what section 47 is. We are speaking jargon. We are doing jargonistic <laughs> terminology. Section 47 is child protection inquiries. Yeah, yeah. So it's serious. Serious concerns. A child has basically been at risk, suffered harm, or they're likely to suffer significant harm, right? So the manager would do that. That was back there. Here, I'm making that decision. So I'm looking at it <laughs> and I'm saying, wow, this is a level four. This is, could potentially be a strap. And then I have to send it to a manager, they review it, and they either agree with me or they disagree, and they say, can you do this, can you do that, da, 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 whatever. So that's what I have do to do. Do you guys have a consultation? No. So when you're on duty, yeah, what's happening? So on duty, let's say, should I talk about the duty line? As so in that's consultation? Line? Yeah. So if I'm on the phones, yeah. yeah, and we're consulting our partners. So that means people are calling and saying, oh, this has happened. What yeah, 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 what can I do? Okay, so that's, okay. Yeah. So then basically, I'm literally telling you what to do on the phone, advising, because some professionals think they know it all. So I would advise <laughs> you to do what you need to do, and then I will take note of it and then progress it. It needs to be added as a contact, or it could be no further action if I've so given all the, the advice. your consultations, are they contact? Yeah, every single one of them. <laughs> They're not, they can't even be case notes. I've tried to cheat the system if you, it can't be a case. It's literally a contact. They want everything recorded. So, uh, that is mad. So let's just say, I've had a few cases, yeah, where let's say a mum calls and says, dad's not letting me have contact. Put the phone down. A day later, the dad, that's a contact, right? Day Flip. later, we close it down, we've given mum the advice. The day later, the dad calls back, mum's not letting me have contact. That's now another, that's now another contact Oh the my children. gosh. And then, pick up the phone the school have called oh mum and dad are fighting there's acrimony um but we that's, did, another that's another contact so then imagine that all of those contacts if i don't progress them and i just do nfa 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 at some point i'm gonna have to send it across for a mash right yeah because then you're thinking there's multiple there's referrals multiple that referrals in. that are coming in when they're not really referrals yeah they're, they're just they're people uh, are contacting the service because well, can you see how tight you get this so is crazy because do you know what we, when you're on duty because i'm on duty i'm even on duty tomorrow monday yeah so basically 
like Charles would say, I'm on the phones. So any sort of like, we call it consultation. You're taking all the consultations from school, um, neighbors, whoever, members of the public. If it's coming from the members of the public, um, we don't even record it whatsoever. If it's really? Whatsoever. So even if it was anonymous, no, it doesn't get recorded. No, unless it's actually a safeguarding issue that now I need to contact. Okay. So if it's like, oh, I can hear my neighbour shouting, or that calls, um, my mum's not letting me have contact, and I'm like, you need to seek legal Legal advice. advice. That's not recorded. Wow. Now, if it's a school or a professional, there's like a little um, like a table form. form thing on word doc- on a word document that the school have called. These are the concerns. This is the advice that you gave, and this is who gave the advice. And that's how we just put it in a consultation folder or something. But if it's like a child has made made a disclosure and the child has said, you know, I've been hit with a belt. That's a straight strap, so then that becomes a contact. Any disclosures, contact. If it's like a safeguarding concern, contact. But if the school is saying, oh, this child has said that he's been slapped, I'm like, is it with a hand, open hand? How often does it happen? If it's not like they haven't been, there's no mark, they haven't been hit with, been hit with an implement, I'm like, please speak to parents, um, discuss it with parents, let parents know what the law actually says about physical chastisement, let them know it's inappropriate, log it on your thing. If it comes up again, let us know. That goes on that form. That's not even a contact. Wow. See us, it would be a contact and then it would someone would allocate that out as a level three amber. Guys, can you see how literally different local authorities work, number one. Number two, how different social workers become burnt out for no reason because mm. Charles can easily get burnt out from all these Just, yeah. unnecessary work that's happening for her. Another part of my role is to kind of allocate cases out. So when uh, we've put the contacts on the system, the seniors in my service, we have to actually go through all of those contacts, either NFA them, progress them to the other teams, liaise with management, Um, in other teams and say this is coming over to your team and let them know and then send it over to their team or we're we're reviewing it and we're saying actually it meets threshold for an assessment um, a mash assessment and then we progress and allocate it out to a social worker so we have to review it looking at the history obviously um, looking at the current concerns and then basically allocating the case out is your mash assessment a mash check our mash assessment is basically where you would do your mash checks Okay. Does that make sense? Or MASH inquiry. Yeah, MASH inquiry. Because everyone calls it different things. So MASH inquiry is basically where you do your checks. MASH assessment. They call it MASH assessment. Yeah, we call it all three then. MASH assessment, MASH inquiry, MASH check. Yeah, I go in between. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, And then what you'll do is, on our system, um, we can literally go and delegate the work to the partners. So we just hit delegate, delegate to the police, drug and alcohol, housing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you can do that? Yeah, we send the checks out and then they pick it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, you send the checks out? Yes. There we go. Go Um, ahead. Good night. (laughs) When we have to do mass checks, like, you just say, okay, the manager would be like, okay, yeah. No, so you make the recommendation as a senior that this needs a mass check. Manager approves and does the mass episode, opens the mass episode. When they've opened that episode, you then put date of birth, address, um, child child and parent's name, what the, a brief, what the concern was, and then send it over to admin. Admin does every single thing, sends it to all the different partner agencies, and then when it's ready, they've got all the information, it will come on your match assessment form in your tray for you to read and sign up. Okay. That sounds really good. Yeah. Very efficient. But I mean, it's it's not difficult for us to do, but it's an additional it's work. It's additional work. And um, where I worked before as a social worker, I'll read on the checks. Yeah, it's additional work. If your admin do it, where I've worked, I've actually worked in three mashes. I'm sitting here telling lies. I've worked in three, three mashes. mashes. Yeah. Where I've worked before, and I, um, literally we'd have a form and then you'd send it out to the partners. And then there was, they really hardly had, they didn't have any admin. They barely That's had admin. Had it. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was a form and you send it out. Where I worked before then, admin would send out the checks for you and then they'll let you know when it's uploaded. This, you're sending out the checks on the system. They respond when they respond. You've got to chase it up, blah, blah, blah. Um, what are your time scales for your MASH? Please? So it's supposed to be 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So once it lands in your tray, you've actually got 24 hours from then. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's standard across every other local authority apart from where I'm working. What's your kind of time scale? So basically, if it's a red, it's 24 hours, right? But if it's an amber... What if it's a green? Green. They have five working days. Oh, wow. Five working days. Yes. yes. Everything is supposed to be 24 hours in mash. Yeah. But if it goes over for whatever reason, like you can't, you're not able to contact the parents or whatever, or you're inundated, like your tray's been full. And for example, me on a Monday, if they fill my tray up on a Friday afternoon and I'm busy on a Friday afternoon, I can't work the cases. Monday, I barely ever touch my tray because of how much calls I co that comes in on duty. Mm. So things going, things on our red, out of time scale, whether it's green, amber, red. Yeah, yeah. But if a red comes in my tray, I, I, it's, you have to action it I, straight away. Yeah, action it literally straight away. So yeah, I probably even say a red is not even twenty five. It's hours. not reds aren't twenty four hours. Red is instant. <laughs> red is instantaneous. But even green, yes, yeah, twenty five hours. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually give you five working days, that's alright. No, it's not right because then what happens is let's say those social workers are getting maybe allocated six, seven cases oh, yeah. each a day. It's all pile so it's all pile up. So it's literally they're effectively a, a mini referral and assessment team. They're case holding. That's crazy. For five You're not meant to case hold you're not in supposed mass. to yeah, you're not. So they're literally holding on to cases for like a week, it's a week's work and then <laughs> If you can't get hold of or the manager rejects it for whatever reason, you still got that case plus new cases are coming in. What's your caseload? So their cases could literally... So as a senior, I don't you case hold. Yeah, I don't case hold at all. So I don't have any cases unless I'm on reds, like the reds senior for that week um, or those few days that we do because we've rotated it now. Um, literally, I'll hold on to the case that I had and then I'll just be churning out the reds. But other than that, I don't case hold. Um, the lowest I've ever seen is maybe 10 cases. Um, I don't know if, like how many families that is, um, but I always say, let's ten say children, so, yeah. 10 children, that could be five families, yeah. And then I've seen literally this week just gone, people have been hitting 27 cases. That's and this right, is in the mash. Yes, yeah, my though. In mash. Because when I hit like 25, 22, it's the, the last time that was quite regular was when we were really short staffed yeah. COVID times where everyone's ill but in let's kind of generalize it on average our caseload is like 10 to 15 yeah that's kind of that's manageable yeah. that's that is manageable. kind of doable yeah and if you get your caseload all the way down say you, you were 15 today that could even mean three families you know because yeah. it could be like a family that has five kids it depends so you could get your case load all the way down to two kids or something and you could get allocated like two cases or three cases the next mm. day and you'll probably get back up to 10 so you just keep working like it's, it's really manageable mm. yeah yeah oh they're very different where i've worked before like not the one before this mash the one before that you would literally have um literally it would be your work had to be completed at the end of the day so anything you're allocated on that morning your work has to be completed at 5 p.m so your previous mash yeah not the, the one i've yeah the one before. before before so the first mash i've ever worked in it would have to be you get allocated in the morning by the end of the day the managers want all your kids they don't care whether it's green or amber they want it in their tray i'm not gonna lie that was my first mash yeah They'll give you 30 cases every day. Yeah. You know, they put your cases back up to 30, but by the end of the day, they're expecting that 30, but obviously it's not possible. Yeah. So they just fill you back up to 30 every day, but they want to work by the end of the day. So yeah. yeah. That is crazy to have that many cases. I think in that team, maybe obviously you'd be allocated. I can tell you family wise, you probably get maximum six or seven families as a senior. And then as a social worker, maybe four or five families to work for that day. But then obviously you're turning it over every single day of the week, five days a week, five sevens or what, 35. You're working with 35 families over the course of the week. And I think then we, we, well, in our match, we've done some, we checked the stats or whatever. 
but in a month we work on is it a month or a week i can't remember it was something ridiculous but it was 1500 children mm -hmm. but i can't remember that must be a month, month babe. must be a month yeah yeah in a week yes. we're doing 400 and something families in a week and maybe those, 500 and in a those week. are contacts and those are contacts so imagine what's going through like it's just a lot guys when we say contacts so for example if someone has said something about your child you're meant to know about it you're meant to know that your child is being created on our database mm -hmm. you're supposed to know you're supposed to even though you don't whether you agree or not that's a different story but you're supposed to know that this is happening but what Charles is saying here is some of these cases are being created but the parents don't know they don't know they the thing is and then it closes and the thing is let's just say if that because you said if, if if you said if a school calls and asks a question about yeah. a child and you give them advice that's a contact but yeah. the parent doesn't need to be contacted the, it just closes yeah it will just close so but the parent doesn't know that they that, called yeah so the the, the be best practice or good practice would be was for that school to go back and say we like let the parents know that you've contacted mash you've had these concerns blah, blah 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 and as a mash team what good practice would be would be to write a letter and say you've come to our attention with da, 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 on this date and we're closed we've taken no further action so it's recorded and that parent may call back and say what i don't understand what happened blah 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 whatever but that's just best practice however obviously great practice would be to have pick up the phone and speak to every single parent but if you're creating 400 500 contacts in a week you do not have the capacity to pick up the phone yeah or sit down and write to, to sit down and write a letter for every single family who's being created on the system so yeah that's just the techie side of it so where i worked last so not my first match my second match um obviously with gdpr what they say is that you don't actually have to gain consent from the parents to undertake mass checks if you have safeguarding concerns yeah wait hold on just listen to this right. so their legal had actually drafted like they and they done a good job they drafted a template saying we're requesting this amber check because um, we've got these safeguarding concerns for the children and under such and such and such we we have not obtained parental consent um so you could progress the checks even before speaking to the family because we've got safeguarding concerns. Where I work currently, they also have that view, but they just haven't given us the legislative background to like kind of say that or whatever. Yeah, where um, I work now, like if, for example, we can't get hold of a family, but the, the referral is clearly a safeguarding concern, we then speak to higher management and they just approve for us to do mass checks just a check mm -hmm. to see if there's anything else underlying that may be attached to the referral or whatever yeah. so then that's when it gets overrided or if it's a section 47 child child protection that's issue, just automatic that's automatic yeah without consent but yeah everything else like a green mash is effectively you're just saying they need some form of support um and it's low level concern so effectively you should be speaking to the parent and trying to obviously work with them and stuff like that but yeah that's crazy the, that's, the, that's the differences in the mesh man. Yeah, we, just we should just have a chit chat about it yeah this is actually our first like personal chit chat in depth about the differences because we noticed it and we're like wait hold on what is that we should do a video about it yeah yeah, so. yeah. So we just thought we should do it on camera. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, obviously, if you've got any further questions or queries about the MASH team specifically, drop a comment below. We will be responding. We'll be in the comments. Ask us anything. If you didn't understand anything, like rag rating. Um, if you don't understand GDPR. anything about GDPR. All of those things, let us know. And we're more than happy to answer in the comments. If you want a more in-depth video, let us know as well. Um, but yeah, make sure you hop over to Wonders World. <laughs> so you can catch up on our next content uh, make sure you subscribe like and share and we will be back with another video bye bye